Who is Alexander Lukashenko? And why is he known as Europe's last dictator? Watch till the end to find out. On January 4, 2024, the Belarusian president Alexander Lukashenko signed a new law that granted him lifelong immunity from criminal prosecution. Technically, the law applies to all presidents of the country who cannot be held accountable for actions committed in connection with exercising presidential powers. But that's good news for Lukashenko. He is the first and only president of the country. The 69-year-old has been ruling the country for the past 30 years, and he does not aim to leave his seat anytime soon. Not only does the law prevent anyone else to mount a respectable campaign, most of the persecuted opposition sits abroad. The law also requires candidates to have permanent local residence for the past 20 years and to have never owned a residence permit in another country. If, by some miracle, Lukashenko were to lose his seat, he would be provided with lifelong state protection, life and health insurance, and medical care. Now, all this begs the question, why have an election? Then, if you Google the phrase Europe's last dictator, you are greeted with a picture of the Belarusian president, whose strong grip on his country has persisted for 30 years. In that period, he's won six presidential elections and is now looking forward to contesting in his seventh. Here's his electoral record. Won in 1994 by 80% vote, 2001 by 75%, and then 2006, 2010, 2015, and 2020 with 80% vote. Political analysts are guessing that he might end up winning the 2025 election by around 80% votes. Wink, wink. All this while he claims that the West and his political enemies that have fled the country will try to hijack the process and use new triggers to destabilize the society. This tale starts in the Soviet Union. Lukashenko's route to politics was rife with professional diversity. He served in the Soviet border troops and then held managerial positions in the agricultural sector, particularly in collective farms. In the 80s, he got involved in politics and was rising through the ranks of the Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic. The BSSR had its own constitution and government, but like other Soviet republics, worked within a centralized framework he was elected to the Republic's highest legislative body, the Supreme Soviet of the Belarusian SSR. For context, around this time, Mikhail Gorbachev was talking about normalizing relations with the West with his perestroika and glasnost initiatives. These policies completely defied the young up-and-comer's vision of the Soviet politics, siding with hardline communists who promoted the planned economy model that he now follows. He even backed a botched coup attempt against the Soviet leader, in the late 80s and early 90s, the Belarusian became known for his populist stances and his outspoken criticism of corruption and inefficiency. He had a straightforward narrative, end corruption, improve economy, and bring stability. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the seceded Belarus went into a transitory phase. The chairman of the Supreme Soviet of Belarus, Stanislav Shushkevich, became the first head of state of independent Belarus, it should be noted that he was not the president vis-a-vis. -vis. Lukashenko won the first election for presidency in 1994. Always a hardline conservative, he believed in the preservation of the Soviet values. Without the Moscow red tape, he did not have to contend with the slew of different ideologies of the time. The ones he did have to compete against at home did not exist for long. Early on in his term, he began consolidating power by centralizing authority and eliminating political opposition. This control extended to the police and the security forces, who play key roles in his governance. One of the most dangerous threats to his rule was media. He could not see people criticizing his policies and inciting dissent on live television. Long story short, Belarus has now state-controlled media. Nothing worth saying gets said on television, and independent observers claim that Belarus has the lowest freedom of press in all of Europe. Once championing a rhetoric against corruption, Lukashenko's government is now quick to shut down any investigation into the corruption charges. The inept nature of the government has fostered an I scratch your back, you scratch mine attitude. Large infrastructure projects disappear into thin air and funds allocated to particular services are never seen. For a politician who won his first election, on the promise of controlled wages and opposition of privatization in favor of more government control, he is quite wary of accusations of corruption aimed at his inept government. It does not come as a surprise that Belarusian economy has stalled since 2012. 
Since the governing body has a rose-tinted view of the Soviet era, he has kept close ties with Russia. It is heavily reliant on the Eastern powerhouse for oil and gas, and Lukashenko has referred to Vladimir Putin as an elderly brother. But it, all this does not mean that Belarus is in bed with the Russians. If anything, the government promises democratic reforms to appease the EU. Despite using EU as a bargaining chip against Russia and Russia against the EU, the country with little to no natural resources struggled during the COVID pandemic. Speaking of the pandemic, the premier was adamant that there was no such thing. And if there was, vodka and saunas were its cure. But economy is not the only problem Lukashenko's government has faced in recent times. After yet another controversial election win in 2020, mass protests erupted in the country. Complaints of voter fraud and irregularities were so severe that even the loyal security forces were having a hard time curbing protests. Mass arrests, torture, and cases of human rights abuses were widely observed. Finding it hard to suppress public opposition, Lukashenko turned to his good old ally, Vladimir Putin. He would later broker a truce between Putin and the head of the Wagner Group, Yevgeny Prigozhin. Even if the increasing political confrontation inside manages to kick Lukashenko out of power, it's hard to see how it will yield any positive results. With no organized political faction ready to take the reins, Belarus's future remains uncertain. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more content, and let us know your thoughts in the comments. That's it for now. See you in the next one.